It's not controlled by central government or bound by council policy. And that's probably why the Plunkett Society is so popular and such an iconic institution. Of course, some will say it's not like it used to be. Those leisurely visits over a cup of tea have long gone. Plunkett nurses are pushed for time. The Plunkett Society is pushed for cash. But as it celebrates its centenary, Plunkett has vowed to never give up. Mothers need it now more than ever. This from Jendi Harper. <laughs> oh, sweetie pie. <laughs> It's fair to say our filming is not going according to plan. <laughs> according to the archives, anyway. When Plunkett celebrated its jubilee in 1957, they made sure the babies they rolled out then were happy to be there. <laughs> but our centennial Plunkett baby, dear little Katie Moore, has gone beyond tired. To kindly accommodate our camera, she's foregone her nap. Sir Truby King would have been horrified. Plunkett's founder was a stickler for routine, four hourly feeding, mothering around a 24-hour Plunkett clock. The feeding by the clock, yeah, well, uh, just an interesting part of the history that thankfully is long gone. Jim Sullivan was a Plunkett baby and now author of Plunkett's history. We meet him at Olverston, Dunedin, where 100 years ago, Truby King asked the city's richest folk for funds to form an association for mother and child. Truby King had on side people who could write out cheques. They wrote out about $100,000 worth of cheques at this table before the society started. It took the name of its patroness, Lady Plunkett, and soon newly trained Plunkett nurses headed out to newly built Plunkett Rooms. Minister, Mr Nash, pays tribute to the work done by the society throughout the Dominion. They made home visits too. Somehow a Plunkett nurse will always get to her mothers and babies. Even the Southern Alps have less interest for Sister Dorothy Pierce than the record sheets of her baby cases in the remote little township of Hust. There may have been one or two Plunkett nurses, and I'm, I'm sure there were, who in the early days were authoritarian. They tended to lay down the law, uh, but they were few and far between, and they don't exist now. Well, baby's doing very well, Mrs. McLean. Has she picked up much from the daycare? Jill Salt has been a Plunkett nurse for 25 years. She's noticed mums lead busier lives now, and so does she. We don't see people as often as we used to, and we're sorry about that, but that's just the, the nature of um, the funding today, that we can't do that. At one time, a baby could expect to have seven or eight visits a year in its first year. Now, the figure might be... I don't know, a couple. I think to say that Plunkett funding is on the low side uh, is probably um, a kindness. It, it should be, for my mind, having studied the society, uh, treble, quadruple uh, in order to meet the goals. Today, the government gives around $30 million a year. Millions more must come from fundraising. So Plunkett committees still organise Plunkett balls and offer Plunkett catering. There you'll find the cares of the day being banished by cups of Plunkett tea. Successive health departments have tried to take Plunkett under their wing to no avail. If I was a politician, I wouldn't mess with Plunkett. Well, you might want to look on page 40 in Thriving Under Five because there's a, a lot of information there about breastfeeding. Or the Plunkett helpline, it's still there. A kind, calm voice in an often chaotic world. We do get some other very difficult calls where we're knowing that the children are being abused and we have to then make a notification to the child, um, youth and their family service and that's really difficult too to actually sort of keep those parents sort of online and let them know that we're actually helping them and we're not dobbing them and we're actually helping them move on from that. And the remarkable fact is that we get these calls again and again and we can actually make two notifications to the same family and they still keep calling us so they're actually crying out for help a lot of the time. It was after all Plunkett's first motto, helping the mothers and saving the babies. Same mixture will probably keep it going for another hundred years, tweaked every ten years Every three years a crisis overcome because there's no doubt about it. And a hundred years from now, people will still be having babies. Come on, Paula, bring your window. Good girl. Of course, it's not compulsory to enrol your baby in Plunkett, but 91% of parents choose to do so. Mine did for all six of us. And that's New Zealand close up.